Today's voiceover talent is more than just a pretty voice. Today's voiceover talent has to be a boss, a VO boss. Set yourself up with business owner strategies and success with your host, Ann Ganguza, along with some of the strongest voices in our industry. Rock your business like a boss, a VO boss. Hey guys, it's Ann and Gabby. So, you know, we get asked an awful lot how people can work with the bosses and get more boss in their life. And so we decided we should team up even more to give you guys what you want. So we've created a brand new product that we want to tell you a little bit about. Yeah, so excited. It is called Boss Brilliance. First of all, if you want to be brilliant, you need Boss Brilliance. This is a team console with both myself and Gabby, where we will activate our wonder twin powers just for you. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> because... I want to I touch rings. I want to touch rings. <laughs> and what I love about it is that it is the two of us teamed up. Two bosses are better than one. And with That's our right. combined experience, we are ready to help you guys take it to the next level, whether you need help with sales, branding, marketing, infrastructure, whatever it is. Sign up for a Boss Brilliance consult with us today. If you want a good boss kick in the pants, this is it, guys. This is your chance. Boss Brilliance. You can find it on our website at voboss.com. And now on to today's episode. Welcome, everybody, to the VO Boss podcast. I'm your host, Ann Ganguza, along with my wonderful co-host, Gabby Nistico. Hey, Gabby. Hey, Ann. Today we have a super special episode. This was recorded live at VO Atlanta 2018, and we had an awesome time at the conference, but we also had the opportunity to interview some amazing conference attendees and voice over bosses while we were there. This is part two of this series and uh, someone who is very near and dear to my heart and I'm happy for uh, us to bring to all of you. It's the one and only Juana Plata. Plata, thank you. Thank you. Yay. First of all, apologies. I was waiting for you downstairs. <laughs> I thought maybe you got lost and I Oops. was like, and I was like, I was trying to text you, but I was here. So I, I, <laughs> Please accept my apologies. Um, oh, I got okay, lost okay. in translation. Can I pull that one out? Can, you look, can, yes, you can pull that okay, card sorry. out. Sorry. <laughs> we know English. <laughs> we know English, but thank you so much. I'm so honored. We got lost I'm so in nervous. the bathroom earlier, We're honored I think. To have I am you. with the ladies of VO and well, the bosses. Oh, we all, I think we are all bosses, and um, we certainly have thought that much of you to ask thank you, you so much. here really today, so you can help all of us to be more of a boss. Well, first you have to <laughs> roll your R's. I cannot do that. You're gonna so you can be like, I'm going to love that. Oh, Gabriel. Gabriel. Yeah, yeah. You can roll the R in Gabriel. Yeah. Gabriel. Oh, <laughs> excellent. Wow. I like that. I'm, I'm, I'm here on Ooh, weekends this too. This show is hot. <laughs> oh my God. This show Ooh. is hot. Gabriel and I'm going that is going in our intro. <laughs> okay, is this getting a little bit out of hand here? It's like, I, I don't think so. I'm a mother. I'm, I'm just, so, <laughs> so, not not trucker mother. For, for, <laughs> not trucker. So for those of oh those of our listeners or watchers, we're streaming like that don't know you. Tell us a little bit. About your journey, your voiceover journey, My and a little voice bit about yourself. Over journey. So I come from a voiceover family. My father started this business 51 years ago in Colombia, South America. And I say South America because not South Carolina. And just to make sure, yes, so just to make sure, is with a O, Colombia, not Colombia. And I, he, he, he was, um, I would like to say, not the, he was the Dick Clark of Colombia. He was in the movie industry, television, radio. He started networks. He was a Mr. Rock back in the 70s. I'm pretty sure he did. Also, whole sort for, of a for, for listeners and there. viewers' sake, it, we yeah. say was only because he's semi-retired now. Yes, he is yes. still with us. He's still with us. He's alive and well. Yes, he's fabulous. He actually yeah. arrived from Colombia two days ago, and he's desperately looking forward to coming Yay. to see everybody at VO Atlanta. So hopefully oh, he'll be yeah, here tonight. Awesome. Nice. And so as a, as a... 
As a good old rebel, I refused to follow my father's steps There because I didn't want to be like him. <laughs> of Hello. course, of course. And actually, at a point, I thought about changing my last name. And then I migrated to the United States. He was he, After he was very famous in Colombia, he moved here to the States, and he started with CNN Radio Noticias, which is uh, the radio part of CNN Español. And so I was starting college, and he said, would you like to come over to the United? And I was already here at the airport. I'm like, I'm here. <laughs> I love the United, United States. And I'm here. Oh. So when I moved here, I, I didn't want to be, uh, and I, the reason why I left Colombia is because I didn't want to be the daughter of. I didn't mm -hmm. want people to think that I was taking advantage of my father's reputation or connections or anything like that. Little did I know that 30 years later I was going to do it. But anyway, that's a different story. <laughs> Um, and so I started my career here in the United States as a probation officer. Yes, I had a gun wow, and uh, wow. packed heat, and I am very familiar She's with the well. judicial system. Good. After that, I, it, but it's funny the way that things work. I started as a probation officer, and I met police officers and judges and a lot of people in the government. And then after that, somebody said, Univision, Univision is coming to Atlanta. And I said, oh, you know what? I would love to be in TV. Like, You know, I can lose a couple of pounds and I'll be on TV and I can do that. So I applied for the job and I got it. I had braces. I was 22 years old. Um, and I became a producer and a host and a news anchor with zero oh training because gosh. I didn't wow. want to be like my father. Yeah. Oh my um, gosh. And so I started with Univision and uh, I was very lucky to be nominated as an Emmy producer. Uh, nominated for the Emmy as a producer and as a host. And uh, after my stunt in TV, I, I really wanted to eat because I love eating. <laughs> and I could only do so, much, so many diets that I was like, you know what? I don't care about how I look anymore. I really want to be happy. <laughs> so I left television and I went back to college to study business administration because that was like, it was, it was haunting me forever. It's like, I don't know, you know, like, can I pull this out? Well, like, let's see, you know, maybe I will. Wow. I studied business and little did I know that I was getting ready to start my voiceover career mm -hmm. and so one day my father is like are you finally going to listen to me and get into voiceover and I said my voice is horrible I don't like it it's squeaky and it's so and I don't like it and he's like let's do a demo and let the clients decide what you want to mm -hmm. do and I said okay so we sent our first demo and my very first client was all the e-learning campaign for Tiffany and Company for Latin America <laughs> <laughs> and I said well Wow. If they're going to pay with diamonds, I'm not actually happy. <laughs> um, and I'm I, always saying <clears throat> Tiffany's, right? As a brand, I don't go on sale. Yes, that, that was Tiffany yep. and Company was my very first wow. uh, e-learning. Wow. Um, you know, and I was like, okay, I really enjoy e-learning. So I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll start doing this. I'll start doing more narrations. That was four years ago. Wow. But I sat down and I said, okay, I have a degree in business and I need to treat this as a business. So what am I going to do? I have no money to invest. I am just starting. I don't know absolutely anybody. I don't know how to get an agent. I don't know how to get sag after what is sag after uh, all these weird things. And then you have this coach and there's the other coach. And then, you know, the difference between e-learning and medical narration and then commercial and then this and it's like, oh my God, this is so overwhelming. I was just sent out and, and, and I did my um, LinkedIn profile. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm going to start contacting people through LinkedIn. From day one, which was um, August 7, 2013, to August 7, 2014, I had at least a thousand connections. I had increased from zero mm -hmm. to almost $50,000 a year on year one. Wow. Um, I still have lots of clients that I contacted through LinkedIn that are local to the Atlanta area and some international that are giving me business continuously. And I am glad to say, not to boast, but just to let people know that it is possible. Mm -hmm. Last year, I broke the six figure. And, and, I, I'm st and the only advertising that I have done is through LinkedIn. Wow. So it, you know, my marketing efforts mm -hmm. are LinkedIn. Now I'm, I'm stepping into the Juana Plata 2.0, so I'm changing a little <laughs> bit my, yeah, 2.0, so, but one of the things that I, I, um, I think is extremely important is investing in your career. Mm. Yes. Yes, we all start with a little logo that we design in a nap napkin, awesome, <laughs> but once you can go do the next step, unless you want to stay there, and that's perfectly fine. If that's where you feel comfortable, that's good, but if you want to advance in your career, invest. Invest in your image. Invest in your logo, in your branding, in your marketing, 
learning. That is just so important and, and do a lot of PR. Well, it's it, it, a little bit of the conversation that you and I were having before, and what I was saying, I find it fascinating because you're very unique. You are a second-generation voice actor, yes. but but it's not like, you know, if, if your dad, you know, other, other businesses, you know, if your father's an accountant, he hands you his CPA firm, he retires, mm-hmm. and you yes. go forward with his clientele. That is not at all what you've had to do. You had to build this up for yourself, yourself. just from the bottom, the same way we all did, mm-hmm. and make your own name. Yes. And yes. somewhere in the back, it was like, oh, yeah, and by the way, this is my dad. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and despite all that, yeah. And, yeah. and you had, and I think you had the... The, I guess the background knowledge and, and the forthwith to do know that you needed to do the marketing yes to do that and so you excelled at that aspect of it which is I think I, I would I would you were intimated that that was what attributed to your success in a short amount of time yes I do I, I have to say I feel very proud of my dad and now mm-hmm. I understand all the hardships that he had to go through when we when I me and my siblings were growing up um, you know, it was like we were talking about the, the the different waves of money coming in and not, and it's, it's you know, yeah. th- this past February was not pretty, not mm-hmm. pretty at all. But you know what? March starting and starting really good. Mm-hmm. So it's like you have to be a boss, yeah. financially savvy, to learn how to save for the, as we call it in Spanish, the thin cow. Uh, moments you have the mm-hmm. fat cows and then that's like when you eat a lot and like then you that. have the really thin ones are like yep. okay I'm like, I cannot I like kill that. you because you know we're all both gonna die like so yeah, you have to just plan for them yes like, I think. Um, but I do have to say that my dad gave me very good advice and he said if you want to live from your ego go ahead but if you want to make a career be smart about it and um, Trey was talking about the different boxes. You know, you have e-learning and you have mm-hmm. com- And I see a lot of colleagues that are like killing themselves for going after a commercial. Yeah. You know, it's like everybody auditions. And the way that I see it is, again, because I love to eat. You know, here I am <laughs> having my big old steak <laughs> while I see 75 people fighting for a chicken wing. Right. Yeah. Right. And mm-hmm. so, so it's up to you. Good you know, it's like if you if you want to if you want to live out of your reputation and your ego, that's valid for you. That's awesome. But if you want to live a good life, and if you want to wake up at ten and not have mm-hmm. you know like a lot of uh, uh, how do you call this little bags bags, bags yeah. and sca- uh, cross feet mm-hmm. because you want to you know have a good night's sleep and and enjoy and travel and you know you can go to the different markets that are looking yes. for what you have. Yes. Um, and one of the things that I have noticed lately is um, Spanglish. Mm. I refused for the longest time to acknowledge that there was a market for Spanglish because I felt it was well, disrespectful for yeah. English and Spanish. It's a bastardization yes. and it's in and, the worst mm-hmm. way. And yeah. being first uh, immigrate, an, an immigrant, not first generation. My daughter is first generation. I'm trying to get her also to get into the voiceover uh, wagons. That will third be three generation. of us. That will be a third generation. So hopefully third I won't generation. try. Uh, but, uh, but the Spanglish is, is actually... <laughs> Very excited. Gabby's yeah, very excited. The Spanglish is actually catching up a lot, and um, it's not that we are gonna take over the world. It, you know, the Hispanics are taking over America. That's, no, no, it's not no. happening. That's silly. Come on. Uh, the way that I see it is, Spanish is for the first generation that's uh, immigrating, and do not either manage English the way it's supposed to be. They don't speak it as fluently. They don't understand it because it's you know it's a little tough. You're a little older, and it's hard to understand. And then you have um, the first generations that, uh, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the immigrants, the first generations that don't want to let go of their roots, but already are assimilating uh, the English market. Okay. And then you have the Spanglish, which is my household. My daughter was born here. I speak Spanish. My husband speaks Spanish. But in order not to kill each other, we both argue in English. And my daughter manages better English than Spanish. So... Cuando estamos hablando en casa, we go back and forward entre una palabra y la otra, and that's called Spanglish. And uh, can I say brands? Or I, can, I, can I say yeah, products? Sure. Yeah. I'm a voiceover for Pandora. And recently, my first um, Spanglish commercial was for Crest 3D White. Sonri- Sonrisas blancas y dientes hermosos. Use Crest 3D White. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know. Oh, my gosh. Wow. This is something that is kind of interesting. Wow. So so mm-hmm. that's another. That's so another. it's now the evolution. That's yeah. you yeah. and I originally yes. came yes. from the mind frame that it was uh, literally a, a, a negative on the cultural 
and the heritage of yes. the language. Now it's more, oh, okay, we're evolving into something new. Exactly. And that's, Absolutely. That's and fascinating. Uh, one last thing, because I know we're running a little bit late on time, but for my English-speaking colleagues, it doesn't end in Europe. There are a lot of companies in South America yeah. that want to break into the American market. So they look for voices, American or British voices, native, that want to you know, do their corporate videos or presentation videos that sometimes they even have, let's say, Johnson & Johnson in Colombia wants to show Big Papa Johnson & Johnson here in the United mm -hmm. States what they're doing, showing their efforts. So they will hire someone that speaks as a native mm -hmm. um, uh, English speaker to do their their commercials, videos, anything and everything that is required in English. So look down there, there is some good money. Brazil has a lot of money. And yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk. Right. Well, on that note, <laughs> I want to thank you so no, much thank for you. joining thank us. You. It has Again, been an honor for us and my a pleasure. Apologies thank you for, for sharing. Right. Oh, no, not at all. Me understood completely oh. wrong. <laughs> you compacted <laughs> all this beautiful wisdom and, and generosity in a short amount of time so thank, thank you, you for that thank you so much forever mucho grateful gusto, mucho. muchas gracias how can people get in touch with you um, find more up about you plata.juana at gmail.com or okay. through my website juanaplata.com and that's plata thank you plata. thank you well Gabby it's been an amazing Podcast, live, live, live podcast for our first live podcast. Um, thanks. They're amazing guests. I love it's you, girl. Awesome. I love you too. Oh. Okay, now we're gonna go cry. Yeah, we're gonna go have. <laughs> thanks, everybody. I'd like to to really thank everybody for supporting us and listening to yeah. us. And and I love I love working with this this girl. And um, I'm telling you, we're gonna keep it going and keep it up for Heck yeah. as long as we can. Yep. So till they take the microphones away. That's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next Tuesday. Yeah. Join us next week for another edition of P.O. Boss with your hosts, Angan Guza and Gabby Nistico. All rights reserved. Angan Guza voice talent in association with Three Moon Media. Redistribution with permission. Coast to coast connectivity via IPDTL.